Welcome to Theodore Skurblog, me, reads you a short story. This story is called Building Q. If you explore Building Q on the university's campus, which you are repeatedly asked not to do by various signs and warnings along the way, please go directly to your destination using only your map. Wandering may result in disciplinary action or injury. You may have by chance fallen across the infamous ramp to nowhere, which is said to exist in the twisted innards of the building. Building Q, like many of the campus buildings, was constructed over the remnants of previous buildings so it's not surprising that certain anomalies exist within it. Students often encounter a few stairs that lead directly into a wall, or doors that just lead to other doors. But the ramp was different. According to lore, it led literally to nowhere. Not a wall or a set of ducts, but a vast empty space that was said to be unpredictable if you tried to enter it, which is exactly what Don and his party of three explorers had planned to do. It was strictly forbidden, of course, but by combining their maps, packing a few sandwiches and amphetamines, the three sent out, set out to spend whatever time it took even overnight if necessary, to put to rest any rumors of the ramp. Had any student ever spent overnight in Building Q? Absolutely not. Dawn was an ace in programming and structures, so getting past the first security booth, and even the security cubes was not a problem. Volker was a wrench, accessing panels and reversing escalators as needed, and Amy Fenton was a game theorist and camouflage pro, brought in to address the problem of the Cantini sculpture that hovered menacingly above the main atrium, its wrought iron spikes and colored glass shards dangling horribly from its floating frame. Unfortunately, Volker got caught by the leg and had to be abandoned. Hours later, in against a vice, Amy scouted ahead and Dawn never saw her again. But Dawn forged on following his original plan and detected a faint scent in the air like very cold ice. At some point, Don had a very strong sense that he was underground. He found a carpeted square of floor, took some hydration, and closed his eyes. When he woke, the cold had intensified. He could hear the low-frequency thud of boots coming through the pipes. Then, turning a corner, Don saw the shimmering void. It was the end of a hallway and the top of the infamous ramp. His heart pounded with fear and triumph. He had done it. He had found it. Good job, Don, said Building Q in a booming, echoing voice coming from everywhere. You found the ramp to nowhere. Who said that? Don said, turning around. Time to go nowhere, the building said in a smirky way. Quickly now, they're coming. Don could feel air jets from nearby vents urging him forward. Wait, he said. I just wanted to find it, not go through it. But the air jets got stronger. Sorry, Don, said Building Q. This is non-negotiable. But nothing will hurt and you're in for quite a ride. Don stumbled forward and stepped off the edge of the ramp. He fell or maybe floated into darkness. 
It was still very cold, and Dawn's eyes desperately searched for any source of light. And then the colors came. The next morning, an identical Dawn received a note from the registrar. His course load had been transferred from Building Q to the sub-library. Interesting, Dawn thought. That building is rumored to have a bottomless pit in its core. But neither Amy or Volker were answering his texts, and he was wary of going this alone, although he wondered, as he consulted his illegal maps, what harm could come of making a few sandwiches just in case. Thank you for listening.